Hey everybody, Dan here with No Games for Old Men. Welcome back to Vampire. Last time, we finally defeated Fergal of the Ascalon Club. And then we came down here and discovered a whole bunch of skulls living in the sewers. Seemingly led by a... Educated skull named Old Bridget who doesn't really look quite so old, but once you become a skull... Oh! Who's this guy? Rodney Grader? Who are you? Have we met you? Are you alright, sir? What are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. Don't you know this is a quarantine zone? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm investigating the epidemic. You had better get to a safe place while you still can. Oh, really? Well, go investigate somewhere else, and leave me be. I beg your pardon? I said go. Leave me alone, sir. Okay, so the dude's just kind of living down here with the skulls. They don't seem to be bothering him. Uh... What is... This is unusual, is why I'm pausing here. This is like one of the normal little wicker basket crates that we see all over the place, but this one's got flies all over it. Why? Okay, well, that was it. There was a couple of chemical ingredients in there, but... That's it. Convince Rodney to go back to the docks. Rodney, you're the man who killed that gang member, are you not? Is that why you are hiding in this godforsaken place? Yes, I did. I did not even know his name. Then why did you kill him? That arsehole always mocked me for the color of my skin. Usually I let it go. But not that night. We fought. He died. Had enough of the racism, huh? Unfortunately, I have met several murderers during my lifetime. You don't look like them. I can tell you're no cold-blooded killer. You're right, sir. At first, it was just a simple argument between us, but the man had a bad fall. Believe me, Rodney, you won't survive here long. <laughs> no matter what you did, you must go back to where you used to live. I'll go back to the docks then. He's so aggressive. But if I die, remember that the blood of Rodney Grader will be on your hands. Oh, come on now. Wow. So his blood quality is really high. But there's still a bunch of hints that we have to unlock. Uh, I can't do a medical checkup on him. He's healthy, so we don't need to worry about that. Is that it? Investigation succeeded. You gonna take your canned food with you? That's it. Alright, I guess, uh... That's done. Okay, was there something else? I feel like there was another side quest that was in this area. I think it was the the Paxton thieves. Yeah. But they look like they're above ground on the west side of the western docks. Kind of right above me, so maybe maybe I'll pop up once I exit the shortcut. It's locked. What? She said I could use the shortcut. Bridget. Well, she said follow the arrows, didn't she? So I've got to go back and find arrows. Are they blood arrows? Drawn in blood. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm glad I came this way. Talking to Rodney seems to be the only thing that's over there. The only reason to be in that area, so... Let's see... How does one... Up oh, Arrow! There's an arrow! Okay. It's telling me to just go this way. First, I'm gonna rob these... Poor, poor people. Uh, 
bet I gotta go up there, don't I? Even though the arrow is pointed to the left, not angled up, as far as I can tell. Oh! You guys have a pub? <gasps> What's on draft? Anything? I see no tap handles. You guys are not doing pub correctly. Ew. You're just hanging bones, though. Okay, this is not... I don't like your pub. One star. Okay. Alright, here's, here's the other... Ooh. Enter at your own risk. It's locked, all right. Well, there's nothing but water down there, so I don't want to be in there anyway. Oh, another puzzle. Or maybe not. <laughs> not so much a puzzle. Okay, all right. Careful when you sell items, as some ingredients are hard to gather and may be vital for unlocking and crafting advanced recipes. Yeah, I don't sell anything that says it can be broken down for crafting. I only sell the rings, which don't say that. Looked like an openable crate. Oh, what? Whoa, what has happened here? Oh, no. It's locked. Oh, dear. Sean, ha this is the night shelter? What? Reed. Wow. Would you like to take communion with me now? No, because I think I know what you're Sean, eating. Are you eating raw flesh? It is the sacred flesh of the mortal lamb. Our Lord's bountiful transmutation for the sustenance of his believers. Dude. Thank you, Lord. I am your most humble servant. So, true to your word, you waited for my return. I told you, Dr. Reed, I was a man to be trusted. Did you have words with the poor Harriet? Man, 6,000 XP. He is the pillar, though. <laughs> You make no distinction between the living and the skulls, do you? We are God's children, Dr. Reed. One and all. And he's determined to save us. What will be the result if you continue to assist both skulls and the living? For the last decade, that's what's been happening. And they found a better life. What's to change? You're forgetting the epidemic. Things can go south very quickly. I've seen it. Oh, these are terrible times. Only those pure of heart shall prevail. You've turned Scal now. Don't you see the danger to anyone giving you their trust? We are all sinners, awaiting salvation. This is a simple truth, ordained by the Lord Almighty. I am a seeker of his glorious light. Does this place belong to you? 
How can you be so certain you can keep it open? This warehouse was once property of the Dawson family, but has been bequeathed me through donation. Hmm. The Dawsons? The wealthiest family in London? Have they a clue as to what goes on here? Not at all. The donation was made before the war. The building was run down. I never met Aloysius Dawson myself. So you have the run of the place and no one's taken notice? As long as we keep to ourselves, we interest no one. This is a haven, and I pray it remains so for eons to come. Harriet, Miss Jones has been behaving in a most violent manner. She's going to need special attention. That's precisely the reason I brought her here. To meet old Bridget. She's the guide Harriet requires. Who is this old Bridget? I don't know, Doctor. She rarely speaks of her past, but I know she has a long one. She's likely the oldest soul in the city. Harriet is possessed by her hatred. You cannot let her roam free. She's dangerous. She has joined her own kind, Doctor. Old Bridget is a saint to the younger Skulls, guiding them to salvation and peaceful existence. I believe I've learned all I need to know. I'm certain you've killed no one, but one day I believe you'll cross the line. <laughs> Logic is a false prophet. Faith is the only path to salvation. What do you mean? We have been blessed with God's eternity. We are the instruments of his divine will. We shall feed the hungry forever and ever. Amen. I will strive to emulate your merciful nature, Sean, but it's a difficult pledge to make. Indeed. Give yourself over to God, Doctor. Expel your urges and kneel before the Lord in praise. These urges... You know the hunger will never be satisfied. I've come to embrace the everlasting craving. I have sworn to feed only upon the flesh of the dead. It is now my sacrament. Take, eat. This is my body. So saith the Lord. Oh, spare. I envy the piece you found. Embrace. I don't trust you. Turn. You sacrifice 500 XP in the process. You will heal through my blood. Okay, now Lady Ashbury said, warned us against trying to make vampires because we're not skilled enough. So. I believe you, Sean. In fact, I'm not sure if that's the right choice or not. I envy the peace you found and will remember it. There is love and compassion in your heart. You only need to give it wings. Thank you for your kind words, Sean. Continue your noble efforts. You are a good man in bad times. Keep to the light, my friend. Like all my flock, you have a home here. Any time you're in the neighborhood. Oh. <laughs> I love that. New citizens available to kill. Oh, the district will soon suffer the consequences of your action. So the fact that the turn option was blue means I unlocked it because I unlocked hints. So because I did so much background work on Sean Hampton, that was a special option. So I think maybe I should have taken that choice, but I didn't. And this is one of those games where it autosaves. So you uh, you live with your choices. So that was my choice. Folded paper. Hello. There we go. All right, 
forgive me, God, for what I'm about to confess. Sometimes I wish I never saved Dyson Delaney from drowning when he fell in the canal. There, I said it. Please forgive me, Lord, for I am just a sinner. Dyson may be the most frustrating case I have ever had to deal with since I opened my night shelter in the East End. For years, I have tried to understand why this man regularly makes me so irritated, and I think I recently found why. Dyson has stopped fighting for good and forever. I met so many heavy drinkers in my life, men and women, rich and poor, young and old. I've witnessed their fight with their demons, their past, their guilt, and their failures. Sometimes they can put a name on this inner evil of theirs. Sometimes they have never been able to identify the real cause of their despair. But in most cases, for these men and women, to drink is a way to keep fighting. Of course, it is a useless and destructive form of struggle, but at least this self-destruction means that something makes them suffer, and they still fight against this pain they feel so deep inside. Even a severe alcoholic like William Bishop keeps struggling with his addiction and asking for salvation for the light of Christ. And as long as they wish to see this light, there is a place for hope. Dyson Delaney has no hope left. He does not drink to smother his pain, no. I'm now convinced he conscientiously drinks for the sadist joy of smothering all hope. I really don't know what is a worse sin, to deliberately cast away hope from your own heart or complacently bask in self-destruction. Dang. Anemia. Okay, so I do I think I do have an anemia treatment, so I'll go I'll go see if I can give it to him. If I can find him. There's anybody in here? Another corpse thrown in the streets. Oh God! Someone's playing a very sick game. <laughs> uh, who's this now? Pleased to be letting me interact. I know this brooch. This is my mother's. A birthday gift from father. Twenty nine Pretty Orchard Street. That's near Poplar's district. Why would this man carry off my mother's brooch? I must go there. Okay, let's see if the Paxtons have anything to say about this situation. You again? What do you want? An attitude. I don't. Ugh. Did you see what just happened? No, I didn't, and I don't care. Really? Wow. Why is that? Because this sexist pig is one of the four men who blacklisted me. Mm. Good riddance, if you ask me. Giselle, tell me about the death of your mother. After our father died, mother worked so hard she made herself sick. We spent all the money we had on useless drugs and doctors. It was hell. Hell? What do you mean? The three of us were exhausted and desperate. And when I'm desperate, I tend to get angry. And I'm hard to live with. Lottie said I killed mother. Oh. You do have a bad temper. Yeah, you should talk to her about it. You should talk to your sister. Whatever happened when your mother died, the truth lies somewhere between your two versions. I don't want to talk about that. It was years ago. We Paxton sisters are tough. We don't apologize. Yeah, okay. Not the best way to handle stuff. Ah. Giselle, I know you sleep at Seanhampton's shelter. 
What can you tell me about him? He provided a roof for me and my sister. I am grateful, of course. But he gives me the creeps. Why is that? He's always sad. Like he's about to cry. He's always asking us to get closer to God. And to give ourselves to the Lord. Mm, creepy. <laughs> Well, I'll leave you for now. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. All right. What about you, Lotta? Glad to see you again, Mr. Reed. I don't think that's true. Do you have anything new? Lottie, tell me about the death of your mother. Giselle killed her. Plain and simple. She killed her with her daily whims. Her laziness and her complaints. That's quite a statement. You can't kill someone because you're fickle. Mother was very <laughs> ill, but I forgave Giselle. What I couldn't stand was how she cried at her funeral like she was the one left alone. Perhaps your sister is not as tough as you are. I know that, and I don't blame her. It just makes me sad that my own sister is the person I understand the least. Giselle is the only family you have left. Don't you think it's time you forgave her? Sometimes words are harder to forgive than acts, Dr. Reed. Lottie, tell me about the Wet Boot Boys. I know they've threatened you. Edwina Cox wanted me to provide her with information about Mr. Hampton's resources. I refused. Is that not dangerous? Fuck them and their lies. Mm. They claim they protect the interests of the neighborhood, but they are just greedy parasites like all the rest. I respect your courage, Miss Paxton, and I hope life will never wear you down. Dr. Reed, <laughs> you know how to make a girl blush. I am glad you came to the docks, whatever your real reasons are. Did you see what happened? No. I was coming back to the shelter from work when I heard an awful scream and there was this man, dead, just in front of the building. You saw nothing at all? No. I told you, just that awful woman's scream. A woman's scream? Are you sure? Of course. It was terrifying. I thought it was my sister, so I ran. But it was a man I've never seen round here before. Interesting. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. Was it this guy just screaming with high pitched scream? All right, Throgmorton, you putz. What do you have to say? Good evening, Mr. Throgmorton. Dr. Reed, can I be of any assistance? Have you noticed anything suspicious lately? Did you see what happened to him? Actually, yes. He was thrown from the roof. Wow. A vulgar log. Why is it that you sound so... afraid? You didn't see it. He was dead before he hit the ground. The strength required to do such a thing, well... It beggars belief. Who could have done that? Who? Well, a vampire, of course. Look, bite marks on the neck and lacerations here. There is definitely a vampire close by. Closer than you think. You've never faced, let alone killed, a vampire, Ichabod. You're a fraud. No, I'm not. <laughs> I may embellish the truth concerning my achievements, but I'm totally dedicated to my quest. Uh. Stop fooling yourself. You've never faced a vampire before. You wouldn't stand a chance. Well, that's not true, sir. I've already faced one of these creatures. Oh, really? <laughs> and you're still alive. Well, we... We... We did not actually fight. I let it go. What do you mean? I yeah. entered the vampire's den. Oh, the stench was terrible. I was ready to kill it. But then I saw it. Just a suffering soul like you and me. I spared her. Tell me about the vampire you spared. It was... She was a girl. Her body was a mess. I could see pus running from the deep wound. Gross. 
She was crying in pain. You cared about her. That's what defines us as human, Ichabod. Yes, but she was a truly evil creature. I'm haunted by the tragedies she caused ever since I spared her. Uh, that sounds like there should be more to talk about. He's healthy, so I don't need to do a medical check on him. Goodbye, and good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton. Is... The other... Okay, yeah, the Paxtons are good. I still need to find this guy. He's got a cold... Can... Oh, Rufus Kingsbury. Okay, well, we need to find him. Oh, he's the, the homeless guy who wanders around. So if we can get him a treatment... That'll be... That'll be good, because I think, I think the two... I just noticed that the two little yellow virus symbols, I think that's like a level two uh, disease condition. Uh, well, okay, so what we need to do next is come down here, because we want to deal with this situation. So we're going to make a left... Out of here. No, we're gonna make a right. <laughs> we're gonna make a right out of here. Good grief. And I think this is the area where. Oh no, not these guys again. Okay, we're gonna. This is no place for a gentleman. You're right. I said stay away, sir. Yes. Hmm. Over there. Oh boy. Oh. Ooh. How come I can't shadow jump? Oh no. Over there! There's one of them! Can I loot? No, can't loot yet. Where are you? There you are. Come on! Come on, buddy. Oh, darn it. Okay. Done. Now I can shadow jump. What on earth? Uh oh. Eh, er, these guys. Do I want to mess with them? I don't know. Okay, we're getting close. Oh. We must be... This could be the public house Giselle Paxton mentioned. Oh, look at she's investigate further. Swing and a miss. Oops. No! Oh, <laughs> dang, this guy. There we go. Chew on him to death. Okay, so this... Can I get in here? No. 
Giselle's stolen money. Hey, we found it. Prewin has some unethical ways of financing their war. Okay, now I heard a skull. It must be below me. All right, let's go back to Giselle and give her this money. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be a thief. Maybe she'll be a little nicer to me if I help her out here. She's been so rude. Here, lady. You again? What do you want? I've identified the men who stole from you. You were right. They were members of some self-proclaimed militia. I knew it! Did you find the money, too? Yes. Yes. Here it is. They thought they could finance their activities with it. I never thought a man like you would be kind enough to... I misjudged you. Badly. Um... I'm... Well... Thank you, sir. Will Sorry. you give the money back to your comrades? Is the word you're looking Fuck for. those bastards who fired me. <laughs> I'll give the money to Miss Gillingham. Her son Jack was a friend of mine. Okay. He was killed recently. Man, still one more hint. Wow. Okay. Okay, did that unlock anything? There we go. I know you were friends with Miss Gillingham's son, Jack. Tell me about his death. Jack's murder has been a shock to the neighborhood. A sign that the situation is now out of control. Why is that? There has always been tension between the wet boot boys and members of the trade union. But a murder? That's a first. Who killed him? No one will ever know. One thing is certain. While Jack was alive, I had one less reason to drink. Oh. Why does that upset you so much? I wish I had found the time and words to tell him how important he was to me before it was too late. Another failure for Giselle Paxton. Well, make up for that by talking to your sister. Perhaps. Just a, just a suggestion. All right, we're out of here. Well, I'll leave you for now. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. All right. Plus 215 XP for that. Where else do we want to go, folks? Let's see. What other side quests do we have? All right, this one. Retrieve the necklace lost by Seymour Fishburn. Uh, if we track that, that'll get us in the vicinity, but it's a pretty big vicinity. Well, let's see. How close is the... Okay, yeah, we got to head that direction anyway. To get to the murdered man's flat. Well, we're kind of going the long way around, but still. Ooh, a skull. Do we kill it? Alright, we've got 2105 XP. Let's see how much XP you get for killing a skull. Fancy. 
five. Five XP. Okay, so... Combat is not... You're not going to be grinding out levels with combat. That's interesting, because now... Oop, 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 rat, 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 rat. This is despicable. That encourages you to feed on civilians. That's interesting. All right, I need to hop over this way. Whee! All right, so somewhere around here is a lost necklace. Oh, right here. Nope. It's not that easy, Dan. Not that easy. Oh, you! I've got a cure for you. Stay there. I don't think I need to talk to you, but you, I have evening, Rufus. Evening, Medicine. Mr. Reed. Do you need help? A real doctor caring about me. That's a first. I feel like a real person. I'm a real boy. A real doctor treats everyone the same, Rufus. I don't know what to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Did that unlock anything? <gasps> no. Sad. All right. So he is recovering. That's so good. long, Rufus. Be careful. Take care. Okay. Great. What other health issues can I deal with? Is that the guy who was just here, and I said I don't need to talk to him? Stella Fishburn. Oh, where did he go? Did he go inside his house? Ooh, she sounds bad. Do I need to talk to this person? Good evening, madam. I'm Dr. Reed. Could I come in? Why? What do you want? I work at the Pembroke Hospital. I'm investigating the flu epidemic in this area. Oh, the Spanish flu. Well, that's quite liberal of you, Doctor. But this is no time to be knocking at people's doors. She's got a point there. She's got a point. Do I need to get, do I need to do this? The disease takes away the good people too, madam. Why not let me in? It's Mrs. Fishburne. Stella Fishburne. And yes, indeed. Why not let a doctor in? Just no eyes in the back of that head, sir. Gentlemen are easy targets in these parts. All right. So you have questions about the flu, then? Yes, well, not so among much. other things. Forgive my rudeness at the door. It's just my son doesn't like strangers coming in the house. The orphan that regards you as a mother, please tell me about him, Stella. You mean Rufus? I wish I could do even more for the poor boy. Most people are so selfish. But you're not. Years may have passed, but I haven't forgotten how it feels to go through days with nothing but an empty stomach. How is life around here? Life has always been hard in the East End. But it's everywhere nowadays, isn't it? Do you think the increase in violence has anything to do with the epidemic? Don't know but it's most likely linked to the gangs, if you ask me. Recently, it's like everyone has had to pick a side. Violence has always fed on poverty, don't you think? It's a cruel law of the human condition. And selfishness is their rotten fruit. 
These days, you can just die in the gutter and no one will bat an eye. May I ask what you do for a living, Mrs. Fishburne? Since my husband died, I worked at the Dawson Rope Factory, but it closed before the war. I occasionally help at the night asylum in exchange for food. Did your husband die in the war? Oh no. My Jack was a docker. He died when my Seymour was just a lad. The poor boy saw his dad slip and fall from that scaffolding. How do you pay the rent then? My Seymour works at the docks, just like his dad. He's very attached to the house he grew up in. It's not always easy, but we get by all right. Okay, so everything Goodbye, else is Mrs. locked Burn. behind hints. Take care of yourself. All right, well, she seems like a nice lady. So... Where is her son? Because I've got something for him, too. There's Rufus. Oop, is that him? Way over here. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. Man. Do you require medical assistance? <laughs> That's something I didn't expect to hear again. A doctor concerned with the health of his patients. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that not standard? I could use some help. On several matters, in fact. I don't know which kind of doctor you're used to dealing with, but it's a doctor's purpose to heal people. And is it your purpose as well, Mr. Reed? I would yes. say it's a convenient way for gaining people's trust. Ooh, cynical. Uh, okay, well, all of the rest of Goodbye, his... Goodbye, Mr. Fishburn. The Fishburn family is shrouded in mystery, so we've got a lot more work to do for them. So I'm still, still looking for this lost necklace. Not sure where I'm going to find such a thing. Unless it's just sitting in a box somewhere. Alright, there's the bridge to get across to Southwark, but I don't need to go there. I don't think. And I'm wondering if the... Oh, there's Edwina. Let's see if she's got anything to say about Paxton. Good evening, Miss Cox. Now Hello again, Dr. Reed. What do you want? Leave the Paxtons alone. No. No. Nothing. Wow, okay. Can I see what you have to sell? As long as you have money, I'll show you all I have. Okay, well, we know we need good trigger parts to upgrade our firearms, so we're gonna buy, oh man, 70 shillings. I'll bet, I'll bet that's a markup. We're gonna buy all three of them. And I don't know if I need anything else, so we're just gonna stick with that. And as for selling, Let's see, we've got a ring we can sell. 16 shillings, that's the same price that Milton Hooks gives us, so... I guess we'll just go ahead and do that. Perfume can be recycled. Bracelet? Let's sell both of those. Ink pen can be recycled. Mirror can be recycled. M my personal watch, I think we'll go ahead and hang on to that. Wait a minute. Necklace? Okay, that can't be the same necklace because I've spoken to both Fishburns and in, in a... The option to 
talk about a necklace didn't come up, so this can't be it. I'm not going to sell it, though, until I have that situation resolved. Oh, boy, here we go. All right. Anybody, anybody see a necklace around here? Good evening, sir. Whatever. Don't you recognize me? <laughs> we met a few nights ago. Don't take it personally. I spent a lot of energy forgetting what I did the night before. Yes, you had definitely drunk too much then as well. As well. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm Dyson Delaney. I'll try to remember you this time. <laughs> Inebriation aside, do you need medical help? Yes. I feel sicker than usual these days. Take this, then. And perhaps you could try to slow down the alcohol intake, too. Hey, Doc, you don't really want me to stop the only remedy I can afford. Is it true Sean Hampton saved your life? Yep. The sad saint grabbed my soggy ass and brought me back to the pier after I fell into the canal. Oh, I was a wreck back then. And yet you're still drowning in cheap liquor. Sean Hampton really acted like a saint that day. But I suppose I'm just another lost soul who doesn't deserve to be saved. What do you do for a living, Mr. Delaney? Have I never talked to this I guy? I drink. I drink in the morning and at noon. I drink at night. And then I drink some more. Why do you drink so much? Maybe it's because I prefer dying slowly. Death can be so abrupt. Personally, I like to see mine come in at my own pace. You sound very sad, sir. That's because I am, Doc. Don't you work at all? I'd love to, but I don't have the time. <laughs> Didn't I tell you? Drink in the morning and at noon. I'll drink at night. Is there anything in particular that you like about this part of town? Except for the cheap drinks, I mean. How dare you say such a thing? I love this neighborhood. So friendly. So joyful. Hmm. No reason at all to rejoice, then. Life is hopeless and then we die, is that it? Let me tell you a story. All right. Go on. A few years ago, when I believed a resolute man could change things around here for good, a tragedy occurred nearby. What kind of tragedy? It was a bomb. A bomb that exploded and killed many people. Metal and blood everywhere. Shouts. Fire. Broken window of the shoe shop. The torn street light. You lost people you loved that day, didn't you? I've lost everything. But you know what the worst part is? I don't even remember where it happened. I've drunk so much to forget it. And now I can't remember where it was. I can't pay my homage to the dead. I'm sorry, Mr. Delaney. It's okay. If you ever find the place, just leave a flower for me there. Even if you tell me where it is, I'm not sure I'd memorize it. Wow. Uh, didn't I just ask him this? Yeah. Surely you must have had dreams and expectations when you were young, like everybody else. Sure. I wanted things to change. To really change, and to change for good. The bigger the dream, the harder the fall. Sounds like you were an idealist, which is honorable. No, sir. I was an anarchist, and I believe that exclusive property is a robbery in nature. I wanted a new world to rise from the ashes, Dr. Reed. Do you really think the world is that bad? No, I believe we all can choose to make it better. But most of us are too weak, too corrupt and too guilty. I failed for sure, but others will come. I want to know more about your past as an anarchist, Dyson. I'm still an anarchist, Doctor. Make no mistake. I just reject <laughs> violence as a tool to change the world, unlike my comrades. Do you still see your comrades, then? Even if you don't agree with their methods anymore, I mean. No. 
I hope they'll come to share my point of view one day. I'll raise my glass to that splendid idea. Do you believe in a bloodless revolution, then? I do not believe in much anymore, Doctor. But I'll admit <laughs> I like your idea of peaceful change. I like it a lot. I wonder if we can Goodbye, turn this guy Mr. around. Delaney. Or if he's always going to be this bummed. All right. Have you found a necklace? Like, welcome back, Doctor. Do you have a lost and found for you? box or anything? Yeah. We already know the answers to all these questions. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Later, Tom. Sabrina, have you found a necklace? You still working at this hour? That's what I call dedication. So are you. Oh, okay. Goodbye, Miss Cavendish. Bummer, man. Where is this necklace? I mean, is it a thing that's just going to be sitting? Oh. Private conversation. Or is it just in a trash can? I don't know. I don't know. Who are you? Archer Woodbead. Good evening, sir. I'm amazed you made it back oh, to the docks Oh, this alone. guy. Good for you. Well, I could say the same about you, young man. More to the point, who the hell are you? I'm Dr. Jonathan <laughs> Reed. And I am Archer Woodbead. Please excuse my assertiveness. I often forget I'm just an old prune. Are we going to have this conversation again? If you were such a respected figure, surely you have many interesting stories about this part of town. You bet I do, but make no mistake. I'm no rat, sir. Some secrets are best left buried. Oh my gosh. All right. Do you still know anyone? From the old days, I mean. Most of them are dead. I still give Miss Gillingham salutations. She doesn't remember me. She did once like me. Boy, <laughs> she was a beauty back then. Who would you trust around here? The owner of the Turquoise Turtle's a decent fella. Tom's his name. Sean Hampton's all right, too. Don't particularly share his religious views. He's quite devout, if you catch my meaning. Any remarkable new faces around here? Nobody. Well, there's that boy Rufus the Curse. I like him, despite the reputation he's made since his parents died. Poor little bastard. I'm sure a district as colorful as the docks must have plenty of stories about strange visitors and creepy characters. So, you want me to talk about the sewer dog, don't you? If you don't mind. The sewer dog is a bitch. Hmm. Appropriately named, an old woman dressed in rags. She has an elegance, though. Despite her ugliness, I saw her once. Scared the life out of me. Oh, Bridget's not so bad. What can you tell me about this part of town? People used to feel safe around here. They had the gangs protecting them. Now all they do is bicker and plot against one another. Missing the good old days, are you not? Trust me, son. The longer you live, the less meaning your existence will have. You need to remember the days you still had beliefs. And what about the gangs? Back in my day, people trusted the wet boot boys. We looked out for the docks and its families. Nowadays, they're just a bunch of greedy fuckers. You were a <laughs> gang member. I was their leader for a time, believe it or not. Really? Now these bastards act like I'm nothing. Not one of them. They owe me some damn respect. All right, did that unlock? Oh, there we go. Wow. All right. Have you always been so bitter? It's not bitterness. It's poorly masked disgust. <laughs> when everything turns to shit, we all have to eat a spoon or two. Oh, boy. Yeah. With everything that's happened recently, the war, Spanish flu, 
I must concede that these are difficult times. A few nights ago, I saw a kid eating a rat. He was right in front of one of those abandoned houses nearby. Just chewing on a living rat's insides. That wasn't me, was it? Tell me everything you know about the Guard of Prewen. Andrew never told me what they do. I do know they're vigilantes with military training. Access to some impressive firepower. And what is your personal opinion about the Guard, then? This Guard of Prewen is just another gang preying on the young and naive. Preying on people like my boy. I know how it works. I invented it. Why did your son really join the Guard of Prewen? If I believed in a higher power, I'd see this as punishment for my own sins. I deserve it for all the young men I enlisted back in the day. You don't believe in God, though, do you, Mr. Woodbead? So why did he join? Now I think about it. Andrew joined the Guard, not to defy me, but to follow in my footsteps, to make me proud. So your son has left you nothing to explain his actions? No letter or message? Not even a note. I'm a proud man, Dr. Reed. But I would kneel and pray if I thought it would give me my Andrew back. Tell me about the wet boot boys, Archer. I want to know more. We were there for the families and each other. It was us against the world. We were vicious, tough, even cruel. But we were united. You sound like you were some kind of radical union member. Yes! Nowadays, the communists and gangs squabble over pointless territory. Sounds stupid when you say it out loud. <laughs> okay. Goodbye, sir. A lot of info out of, out of him. Nothing about a necklace, though. Sadly. I don't know. I think I might be ready to give up on the search for the necklace in favor of other things. And, and just hope that I come across it at some point. It is around here somewhere. This is the area. And she doesn't seem to have it. Anything lootable in this corner here? No. Okay, so we want to get up there? That's Booth Digby. <sighs> Must look a fool. I wonder if I haven't Pardon talked to him in a while. You can't see me, my sweet queen. Perhaps <laughs> we should have listened to what the idiot had to say first. No. Okay. Well, I can't talk to him for some reason. So. Oh wait. I was following the wrong. The wrong marker. Uh, that is. Booth's office. Can I get across this way? Aha! Yes, I can. Sweet! Oh, we've got combat. Okay, let's see. But we can go this way and avoid it. <laughs> nope, we can't, because there's dudes over here, too. All right. Let's see. We can blood him to level 22. Oh my lord. Oh gosh. I'm trapped. I have to go that way. That is where I have to go. So, track the actual vampire cult. Mm. You know what? Alright, what's this guy's level? He's also level... 22. Let's... Let's try it! Let's try it. All 
All right. We got him. Okay. That worked out. Is there another one? Is there another one? I've still got my weapon out. Okay. All right, not too bad. I uh... was a little concerned about a couple of level 22 pre ones. All right, so we are very close to this guy's flat. Anything lootable down there? I don't see anything. Anything in the corner here? Yeah. Salison and quinine. Lootable here. Down here. Any necklaces lying around? Okay, so. Dude's apartment is right here, so that's gonna be. The next investigation. So we'll take that on next time. Folks, I want to thank you for joining me for this episode. Hit the like button and the subscribe button and uh, hit the bell so you can be notified immediately of future episodes of Vampire or of Mech Warrior or of Tabletop Tuesday or of whatever other game we do after this one. So enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Yeah.